The history of bees. Bees are among the most ancient animals on earth. From the evolutionary point of view, bees originated from the wasp kingdom 115 million years ago. The plant kingdom developed simultaneously with the insect realm. As time went by, both kingdoms, plant and bees, developed a symbiotic relationship and created a common language. Eventually, both became interwoven. One huge entity, so to speak. Flowers started to develop color, odor and shape in order to attract bees. At the same time, bees started to pollinate nature. Plants and flowers flourished. Both kingdoms nourish, fertilize and support one another. They belong together and can survive as separate realms. The historical relationship between bees and humanity is very interesting. One of the earliest archaeological finds regarding this bond dates back to 5000 BC in ancient Egypt. Assorted wall paintings were found in caves and traces of bees were discovered in earthenware vases. Another impressive archaeological discovery occurred in Beit She'an, Israel, dating back to 1000 BC. This discovery was much more substantial. An archaeologist found 30 hives made of mud. They were positioned together, creating a wall of hives. Once the hives were opened, the discovery was even more amazing. Honeycombs 3000 years old, full with pure edible honey. The bond between bees and mankind at that time was spiritual. In all ancient cultures, bees as well as honey were attributed with healing properties. It was clear that this beautiful entity represented love, life, honor, vigor and medicine. It was also clear that animals in general and bees in particular were spiritual entities. The word animal originated from the word anima, that is soul in Latin. The connection between mankind and bees was based on a spiritual bond. The industrial revolution in the 19th century brought about a change in the approach towards bees. An entirely different perspective regarding the complexity of bee superorganism life was developed. On one hand, research of bee life gave a beautiful and thorough examination of its complexity. On the other, it initiated a long line of manipulations towards the life of bees. At that time, about 200 years ago, two things happened simultaneously. The first, a new profession known as beekeeping appeared. Until then, beekeeping as an exclusive source of income did not exist. The second, a natural phenomenon referred to as colony collapse disorder or CCD, was recognized. Those two occurrences belong together. One development causes the other. Let us deepen our vision for a moment. Let's compare in a true and honest way the difference between a swarm of bees living in nature and a beehive living in a modern apiary we will discover the astonishing 
consequences of modern beekeeping. Bee life has made a nearly 180 degree about face. Before we begin, it is important to emphasize that there is no intention to slander anyone, only to show facts and reality as they are. Animals in general, and particularly bees, are guided by instincts. The conventional approach of beekeeping is to anthropomorphize bees' nature. We have the tendency to bring about human interests for our own economic needs. Yet, what about the bees' basic needs? They in fact don't really find their expressions, to say the least. The natural order of a bee swarm developing its honeycombs and later on all other activities is from above downwards. The accepted approach is the other way around. The nest is underneath and the attached parts of the hive are added on top. A beehive in nature, or in biodynamic point of view, is a superorganism that functions under its specific rules, rules that have existed for millions of years. The conventional approach regards a beehive as a family that consists of multiple single bees and one queen, thus allowing manipulations affecting bee life. The archetypical form of bee's life and actions, including the hive itself, is round, as can be seen in natural biodynamic beehives. The well-known white hive boxes we identify as a beehive are normally square or rectangular. A bee swarm, as a sun being, will mostly prefer to live in the air sector. A conventional beehive is normally located on the ground. In the spring, all beehives wish to swarm as part of their natural reproduction activity, meaning a new swarm is born. The most important incident in this critical act of swarming is the appearance of a natural and healthy queen in the hive. So in nature, and according to biodynamic beekeeping, swarming is allowed. In the widespread method of beekeeping, swarming is forbidden because of economic considerations. The standard explanation for this is that when the hive swarms, about half of the bees in the hive leave with the original queen. The new queen that will hatch from her cell needs about a month to be fertilized and lay her eggs continuously. An entire month is time and time is money. From the conventional point of view, this month is economically worthwhile because of the potential of honey flow, especially in springtime. As a result, swarming is prohibited. So how does swarming appear in the hive in the first place? When the hive is under population density, Bees start building new queen cells in order to split the hive and swarm. The way to prevent swarming is to add a new box with empty honeycombs on top of the nest. This provides new space for the bees and the natural instinct to swarming is prevented. This manipulation is in fact cutting the branch we are sitting on. As we know, the outcome of this beautiful act of swarming in spring is a new, natural and 
indispensable queen in the hive. A natural queen has crucial consequences within the hive. She is much stronger than an artificial queen. She lives about five to seven years and her eggs are healthier. In other words, the entire superorganism is much more vital. The conventional method replaces the original artificial queen once or twice a year with a new artificial queen in the fall instead of in spring. A specific explanation regarding the differences between a natural and an artificial queen will be given later. Why is the queen replaced that often? It is because the artificial queen is much weaker than a natural queen. She won't live more than two or three years. Some artificial queens don't even live one year. Until 150 years ago, bees were nourished by large varieties of wild flowers. Today, bees are nourished primarily by monoculture, genetically manipulated flora, or sugar juice. A natural bee swarm always prefers to live in one location. It is a very adapted being and knows exactly where its nectar and pollen sources are. In conventional beekeeping, hives are changing locations several times a year according to the flowering origins or in order to pollinate monoculture crops. The continuous relocation of beehives cause huge stress to the bees. It contradicts their natural life. 30% of the capped brood does not survive changing locations and eventually die. A bee swarm builds its own natural honeycombs. Industrial beekeeping uses ready-made foundation combs or plastic combs, the bees don't create their own combs. Bees in nature never receive antibiotics or medicine. Today, nearly all apiaries use antibiotics and medicine. In biodynamic apiaries, the beehive boxes are painted with organic flax oil and beeswax. Conventional beehives are painted with synthetic paint. In nature or at biodynamic apiaries, there is no queen excluder. Conventional and organic beekeepers use this queen excluder to prevent the queen from laying eggs in the upper hive boxes in order to extract the honey without eggs, larva or brood. Do we really have the right to decide for the queen where to lay her eggs? In nature, the hive is never opened. The conventional hives are constantly opened for different reasons. Most are unnecessary. Opening the hive causes stress for the bees. If we consider that the hive is always dark inside, opening it brings light in, causing stress. Furthermore, the temperature and scent of the hive is released and it takes 48 hours to renew both. Bees have existed on Earth for approximately 150 million years. It took us 150 years to eradicate 50% of our own heart, the bees, as a result of colony collapse disorder, CCD. The biodynamic approach 
is working with the powers of nature and bees. The conventional approach is working against nature and its powers. Through this presentation, it is clear why bees are in such a struggle and that a change must be made. First, let's examine in a thorough way the most important being in the hive that must be considered, the queen bee. The queen is the most significant being in this superorganism because a healthy queen creates a healthy hive. In contrast, a weak or sick queen creates a diseased organism. How do we define a healthy or unhealthy queen bee? A healthy queen is defined as a natural queen and an artificial queen is an unhealthy queen. I would like to make another presentation regarding the differences in embryo development between a natural queen and an artificial queen. Later I will explain how and why an artificial queen is produced. A natural queen will from the very first moment develop an around queen cell. The egg will develop vertically. The developing egg revolves to the right. The queen develops in its own organism and she develops in spring. An artificial queen starts to develop in a hexagonal cell. The position of this developing queen is horizontal. The developing egg revolves to the left. The queen develops in a different box. She starts to develop in fall. The vast majority of queens in the world are artificial. There are two reasons beekeepers breed queens in an artificial way. The first is to earn more money as a beekeeper. It is a definitely profitable business if you consider the fact that a queen sells for around $20, depending on the country selling the queens. The second reason is to control nature, meaning the bees. The beekeeper decides for the hive when to replace the queen with an artificial queen he just bought, preferably every year or two in the fall. He believes the hive is receiving a new, young and vital queen. The problem is that the bees recognize the new queen as a foreign element, so to speak. In many instances, the bees don't even accept the queen and kill her. She doesn't belong there in the first place. She is foreign. She isn't a genuine queen. She was conceived under false pretense and hasn't been created in her own organism. It is wrong to adopt such a habit. Let me emphasize again the importance regarding a healthy hive. The root cause for colony collapse disorder is working with artificial queens. Once we are brave enough to accept the beauty and wisdom of nature and let it fulfill its roles, bees and humans will gain. Nature is much wiser than we are. We have to stop attempting to manipulate nature. The sooner we realize this, the better.